Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Again, thank you so very much for joining us this morning. This is the final of our three City Council Breakfast Series events. Um, well, and you can always tell when I don't update my notes or I just kind of print, cut, and paste because my next bullet is just a reminder, our third and final event will take place on April 15th right here at the El Tropicano Hotel featuring District 7 Councilman Chris Medina. Wow. You guys are tired from last night's game, aren't you? Because I am exhausted. <laughs> Holy cow. And the entire night, from about the third quarter on, you just had my wife in the other room, babe, babe, come to bed. Come to bed. But I didn't go to bed. Um, so I'd like to take an opportunity to thank our sponsors uh, for this series. You know, these types of events have turned into the benchmark for our organization. And we've got so many wonderful partners we'd like to thank for their support today. Obviously, big round of applause. They're there for us all the time. Our good friends from Port San Antonio. Round of applause for Port San Antonio. <clears throat> and this series from the beginning has garnered a wonderful slate of across-the-board sponsors from big companies to small companies. Uh, they, need, they know and see the value of of these types of informational uh, uh, events that we bring because they're so very special and it gives you an opportunity to see firsthand what's taking place uh, at your different levels and branches of government. So special thanks, and this is a long list. Uh, CPS Energy, AT&T, Nick's Health, IBC Bank, uh, Our Lady of the Lake University, uh, PW Christensen, PC, Michael Westheimer and Pumpkin Holdings, uh, the San Antonio Water Systems, Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union, the Law Offices of Brown and Ortiz, the San Antonio River Authority, the San Antonio Housing Authority, Jefferson Bank, Central Electric, the Center for Healthcare Services, the San Antonio Economic Development Foundation, uh, United Towing, uh, Hogan Properties, I know Mike is here. Thank you, Mike, for, for coming today. Uh, McKnight and Bravnik, Cerna and Cerna, and our good friends from the San Antonio Police Officers Association, all here supporting our organization. A round of applause for the sponsors and the supporters of this breakfast series. <clears throat> and I know this is going to probably sound a bit redundant, but it is so very important that I acknowledge one of our wonderful small business partners, uh, Lopez Printing, Leonard and, and Roger are here. And these guys come through for us each and every time we ask them. They not only do quality, uh, uh, inexpensive uh, work, it, it's wonderful that they know the importance of supporting their local chamber of commerce. And also, we're going to be giving away a little later, so I hope you put your business card in the, in the big bowl. We're going to be giving away this huge Go Spurs Go banner, courtesy of Lopez Printing, that you can hang at your office, drape around and run around downtown San Antonio, whatever you want to do, it is going to belong to you. So a big round of applause for Lopez Print and Marketing. <clears throat> oh, and another thing, everybody is going to walk away with, at the very least, one of these beautiful Go Spurs Go uh, placards, cards, you can hang it up, put it in your car, Put it on your forehead and just walk around, whatever you guys want to do. So, Leonard, Roger, thank you for, for everything that you do. Also, another one of our, they're not a new member. They, they've been a member, but this year, really stepping it up for our organization. Um, in attendance today, we've got some representatives from Yellow Cab. Uh, they've got Lauren Guerra is here today, and also the man with the longest name in the room, I guarantee it, John uh, Bouliabasis. Did I, did I say that right? Was that close enough? Bull of bases, close enough. Um, guys, thank you so much for, for coming today. Um, man, Fiesta just happened. I used Yellow Cab several times, had several lifts from these guys. That's lift with an I, John, not lift with a Y. I just want to make sure. Everybody's sitting there thinking, wait a minute, that's a, I think that's funny, but I'm not sure why. Um, right now, I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge some, some of the uh, uh, dignitaries that we have here. Uh, in the audience. Uh, it starts with our board members. We've got a fantastic, engaged board of directors. And, uh, you know, we've got a couple of them here. Of course, you heard from Miss Rita Hernandez from Inspiration for Life. Rita, thank you so much for coming and delivering the invocation. Also, our chair elect, we're really excited uh, about the direction of the organization. Uh, you know, our, our board chair, John Leal, has just been fantastic in leading this 
organization, and he's going to be handing the baton to Miss Grace Rodriguez Elliott from Broadway Banks. So a round of applause for our board chair and for our, our incoming chair, John Leal and Grace Rodriguez Elliott. Um, also, so very blessed to have a recent West Chamber Legacy Gala honoree, president of Our Lady of the Lake University, Sister Jane Ann Slater is here. I think there she is. Hello, Sister Slater. <clears throat> um, also representing State Representative uh, Philip Cortez's office, a good friend of mine. I worked with her at City Council several years ago, Miss Marina Gonzalez, her, his chief of staff. <clears throat> Uh, from the Port San Antonio board, we've got Ms. Chris Alderete. Chris, thank you for coming today. And her husband, Alamo College's trustee, Mr. Joe Alderete. Joe, thank you. You're the man. Uh, also, we've got a candidate, uh, a wonderful candidate running for probate court judge number one, Ms. Barbie uh, Sharf Zaldes is here. Barbie, where are you at? <clears throat> You know, and I always talk about this. One of the great things that, that we've been able to do over the last couple of years is forge partnerships with uh, uh, some really, really cool folks out in the West Side community. Uh, from the West Side Development Corporation, somebody who I just think is a rock star. He's a fantastic guy, and he's really doing great things at the WDC. Mr. Leonard Rodriguez, the executive director. Man, how many times have you been called a rock star, Leonard? That's pretty good, right? Uh, also, uh, from the Zoning Commission, um, Great friend of ours. Uh, he's a partner with uh, uh, Bravnik and McKnight, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ricardo Briones. Ricardo, thank you for coming. Also, I know they're hiding in the back. They're probably eating a plate of food. You can't see them. But these types of events are absolutely, you got to have a great staff. And I've got a really, really good one. And they're both here. Uh, Clarissa Rodriguez and Julie Jimenez. Go ahead. And even though you can't see them, give them a round of applause. They're, trust me, they're back there. Uh, We've got a couple of upcoming events I just want to go over. Um, 2014 State of the District Banquet featuring Joaquin Castro. This is one of our benchmark events. We're going to have four to 500 people. It's going to be here at the El Tropicano on June the 5th. Uh, if you get a chance, visit our website, westsachamber.org, for all the information. Also, on June the 12th, we have our Summer Golf Classic over at Brackenridge Golf Course. A lot of you guys already signed up for this, but if you haven't, space in that tournament is filling up really, really fast. Uh, June 12th at Brack, the uh, 2014 West Chamber Summer Golf Classic. Now, in continuing with our program, uh, I would like to introduce for some brief remarks, uh, the chairman of the West San Antonio Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors from CPS Energy, Mr. John Leal. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I know the weather kind of slowed a little bit, uh, some of us down this morning, but uh, CPS Energy will work hard to get those lights back on as quickly as we can. Might as well tackle it right at the very beginning, right? Uh, Gabe mentioned Julie and Clarissa really did a good job, but I also want to point out uh, Councilman Medina's team who really worked hard on this, and we've got a few of them in the back. Uh, Norma, uh, Derek, uh, Joseph, Patty, and the team that really in Andrea that really stands behind the councilman in putting these events together and helping us, you know, have a successful event. Like Gabe said, this completes our breakfast series. And we have, this year alone, we, we, we had a number of elected officials come out and visit with us. Councilwoman Gonzalez, it was freezing that day. Councilman Lopez, it was a nice day. Today will be nice for Councilman Medina, but we seem to be the chamber of weather. So we're gonna plan events, we're gonna fix the drought. We'll get it taken care of. You know, Gabe mentioned about growing the chamber, and we've done a pretty decent job this year. Already 40 new members, and we continue to grow. And it's really Gabe as a, as a focal point of being there every day, reaching and putting our membership out there, and really talking about the benefits. And Grace, it's going to be, you know, fun and exciting. It's been two and a half years of fun and excitement for me. So uh, we really look forward to 2014. We really look forward to 2015. And a couple of those new members that I want to point out, um, Natalie, I saw her at the mixer, uh, really Habitat for Humanity and what they do, providing home ownership um, to those folks who might not see it as quickly as possible, and really reinvesting back into the community. Uh, what an important role that you play, and so thank you very much for your organization and what you do. 
a new member, and I didn't get a chance to meet her yet, but Yvette Martinez with BCFS Healthcare Services. You know, Gabe and, and Julie were at an event this weekend where they had a ribbon cutting for their new facility. And so what a wonderful partner to have, bringing something into the community, and so we're so happy to have them aboard. And also, too, not a new member, but I see him in the back, Anthony Tobias, who uh, has been such a supporter of the chamber. Not to forget that he's going to have an event coming up here soon enough. Uh, May 30th through June 1st at Crockett Park is his jazz festival. And so he's been a supporter of ours. Uh, we've been there uh, during that event um, supporting him. So thank you for joining us today. And actually, you were there at the, at the mixer in, um, uh, here at the Tropicana last month. So thank you for joining us. Uh, in addition, and, and to my left, I want to point out a couple of folks from the company that are here from CPS Energy. Maria Cadoris and Jesse Hernandez and Tony Roland Harris, um, Harris Roland, apologies, who are a part of our new group. We've set up an organization called Community Engagements, and they're really going to be a driving force in the community, meeting with our customers and carrying our message out there. So I really want to tell them thank you for joining us today. I'll ask Gabe to come back up here for a moment so that he can introduce the councilman. I want to keep us on time, and, and I really want to tell you thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having a good event for us, and we really look forward to serving you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Um, one introduction I didn't make, and she plays a vital role in uh, Senator Leticia Van de Putes office. Uh, Minnie Abrego Sanchez is here. She's the community outreach director. Minnie, thank you for coming today. And she also works for the next lieutenant governor for the great state of Texas, Senator Leticia Van <clears throat> um, What can you say about Councilman Chris Medina? He's a, he's a great guy, a wonderful friend to the West San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. He's a wonderful family man, small business owner, v, uh, military veteran he's a current reservist and a first lieutenant in the united states air force reserves and he'll be pinning captain in june later this year he's a san antonio native uh, throughout his career councilman medina has served the community in numerous capacities with several organizations including serving as the president of the french creek village homeowners association the woodlawn lake community association the city's community action advisory board and was a graduate of the city's Citizen Academy. Now, prior to his service on city council, uh, the councilman served in several capacities on the staff of previous councilman, now state rep Justin Rodriguez, including serving as his final chief of staff in that incredibly uh, successful office. Now, uh, he was elected to serve San Antonio City Council in 2011 and then reelected in 2013, where he serves as a strong voice for his constituents. Um, he is a true friend, as I stated, to the West Chamber and its friends and its partners, and it makes me proud to introduce your District 7 Councilman, Chris Medina. I was told not to hit my head, but I don't think I quite uh, got there, but good morning. I'm District 7 City Councilman Chris Medina, and I want to thank all of y'all for being here this morning. I'm sorry I'm running a little late. Uh, the storm did knock out some of the uh, traffic signals on Bandera Road this morning, so coming in, it was pretty, uh, pretty interesting coming down uh, Bandera Road into uh, downtown, but I'm glad to be here. I assure you I wasn't staying up late for the Spurs game last night. That's not why I was running late. It was because of the traffic, but uh, I know the Spurs didn't win last night, but I think they'll finish it off definitely uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Wednesday, so go Spurs, go. Yeah. Well, I know that, uh, you know, this is the second year that we're, we're, we've had the privilege and honor to, to give our state of the district, uh, District 7, uh, here with the West Chamber, and certainly want to thank everybody. Uh, Gabe, you've done a tremendous job, you and your board of trustees, um, in continuing to grow uh, the West Side and, and the West Chamber, um, and uh, it truly has been an honor to work with you and work with your entire team. Y'all are uh, uh, really a great organization and one that's continuing to grow, and as you can see, that's evident here. With that, I want to I want to present y'all with a certificate of recognition and a little something, a little special gift that we have. I think it's up here. Is it here, guys? Yeah. Yeah. I want to, and it's appreciation and recognition to the West San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. You can come back up. <clears throat> Appreciate it very much. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, you know, as Gabe mentioned, I serve in the military, and, and uh, one, one thing that's always very sacred to us is our flags, especially those of uh, the colors that we have. And when I uh, joined the city back in 2007 serving in, uh, in Councilman, then Councilman Rodriguez's office, state representative now, um, I really, really admired our city flag that we have. So I wanted to present the West Chamber with the city of San Antonio's flag. So I'm going to unfurl it here. What do you think? So we can display that somewhere. You got it. Thank you, Gabe, so much. Thank you, John. We appreciate it. Absolutely. You got it. Well, I definitely want to, it, it feels like I'm amongst friends, honestly, because I recognize a lot of familiar faces. I see Joe and Chris Alderete. Many uh, give our senator the best. I know she's, uh, I want to say she's giving them hell out there. That's what I'll say. But uh, it's always good to see you. I know I recognize folks from uh, Councilman Lopez's office, uh, Joseph and Marina from State Representative Cortez's office, and really everybody. I want to also give a huge recognition to our San Antonio police and fire folks that are here. I see them out in the audience as well. Let's give those folks a big round of applause. John, I do want to thank you or at uh, CPS Energy, our public utilities certainly do a tremendous job. I know y'all were, uh, when the power went out last night about midnight, um, we fell back to sleep and uh, we noticed the power was back on. So y'all worked seamlessly to, to get things uh, back and rolling again. So we appreciate that very much. And I understand that Saws is here and I know that uh, I, I just missed Robert Puente, but he left me a little note that he took care of every, everyone's breakfast because he can afford it now. So... Uh, <laughs> But to give my best to Robert Saws, I want to thank y'all. Y'all do a tremendous job of uh, keeping the water on in the faucets and uh, doing everything that y'all do at Saws. We really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, when I got elected to uh, city council in June 2011, um, you know, it, it's, it was very basic for me. Um, I had just come off of uh, four years of working in sta uh, you know, I say Councilman Rodriguez, State Representative Rodriguez's office, and, you know, uh, it was very evident when I blocked walked and I knocked on doors that folks wanted to, folks were very interested in making sure that their potholes were taken care of, we, we could address the stray dog issues. In other words, folks wanted to make sure that we concentrated and focused on basic city services. And, and I think we saw it as evident in um, my colleague that got elected uh, on Saturday, Councilman Joe Cryer. Let's give him a big round of applause. He got elected in, to serve in City Council District 9. And his comments in the paper were concise in that folks wanted to make sure that we got the basic city services right and that we, got, we had a back to basics approach. So uh, that's what I've really been focused on, making sure that uh, we keep our neighborhoods safe, making sure that we have enough police and fire, making sure that uh, we can staff our fire stations and our police stations, making sure that we're doing everything that we can to keep it basic for our, our citizens and our residents. I think that's the expectation for folks. That's why I really have been focused on core neighborhood issues. Uh, and one thing I think that impacts the, the west side in particular has been the efforts that we've been making. And I, rec I, I see uh, Leonard from the WDC. Good morning. Um, you know, they've, they've done a tremendous job. Uh, but like I mentioned, some of the, the efforts that we've been making uh, on the west side have been with the revitalization efforts of St. Mary's University. And I see uh, Mike, uh, Mike Hogan. Um, that's, that's been one area that we really have focused really, really strongly on and being aggressive with economic development. Um, within the past two years alone, we've seen developments along Bandera and Woodlawn, um, investments along that corridor I think are important um, because it, it brings in much needed revitalization and much needed development back into the core area of the city. Um, and one that I know that we've worked with the WC, uh, WDC on one that we're going to continue to work with the neighborhood, the University Park Neighborhood Association, and one that we're going to continue to work with uh, the West Chamber on. Uh, I think that it's, a, it's a, an important partnership and one that you're going to continue to see a lot of investment, a lot of growth uh, in the next, uh, in the next uh, 16 to 18, 24 months. Um, we're finally going to have a, a Walmart being built inside Loop 410, which hasn't been done in so, so long. The closest one we have in District 7 is off of uh, Summit Parkway in 410. And then we have certainly all the development and growth that we have uh, north of Loop 410. So my job is to make sure that we have balanced growth uh, inside Loop 410. And I know uh, Joe can attest that uh, the district is, is, uh, is very unique in that we have areas 
older areas and older neighborhoods inside Loop 410, and then we have some of the newer neighborhoods out in Braun Station and, and uh, Braun Oaks and, and neighborhoods like that. So I think my job is to make sure that we're balanced, that we're doing things that, uh, that we're making the right investments in the core of our city, but also making sure that we have uh, the infrastructure in place to manage the growth outside uh, Loop 410. Um, you know, I, I want to kind of pivot back. You know, everything that we've done, again, has been uh, really dictated by the necessity to keep our neighborhood safe. And one thing that when I got in office, and, and I would say maybe the first six months, eight months in, we had a rash of uh, pedestrian deaths along Fredericksburg Road. Um, and that kind of spurred me to take a look at a holistic approach of what can we do to keep our folks, because the focus had been through SA 2020, and I wanna uh, certainly compliment and uh, commend Mayor Castro for continuing that. And I think that my, my colleagues on the council that were continue to be focused on uh, SA 2020 and those goals. Um, but we wanted to, to strike the right balance between a walkable city, but with also the reality on the ground of um, we in Texas and in San Antonio, we like to drive our cars, but we have to strike a better balance with pedestrian safety and mobility and multimodal options with the balance of making sure that our folks, our seniors especially, because two seniors al along Fredericksburg Road were, were hit and killed trying to cross Fredericksburg Road. So we implemented a strategy called and an initiative called Safe Streets SA which is, gonna, is looking at, and in conjunction with uh, Councilwoman Gonzalez, because I know she's a, an advocate as well for pedestrian safety and, and cyclist safety in San Antonio. So Safe Streets SA is focused on making sure that we strike that right balance between how we can implement policies at City Hall and at the city level um, and work with TxDOT and other, other jurisdictions to make sure that we have a walkable community, a safe community for folks to, that need to, to catch the bus, need to cross the street in a safe, um, haven uh, that folks can, so that they can catch the bus, get to their doctor's appointment, get to uh, whatever, wherever they need to be in any part of the city and know that they don't have to be concerned or worried about their own safety. Um, so we've also looked at, we've also taken that approach in the neighborhoods by offering to lower the speed limits and just also reminding folks that we need to slow down uh, when we're driving in residential areas because we have children that are walking to school in the morning walking uh, to and from school in the afternoon. Um, we have our seniors who want to get out and walk and want to um, just get out in the community and we need to make sure that we have um, those policies in place that keep them safe. So that's something that we've been working on and uh, one that we're, we're going to continue to work on in the coming months. Um, one thing that we've also have been working on in District 7 has been that again that key uh, focus area of our neighborhoods and one that um, you know when I when I uh, when I was a staff member in uh, Representative Rodriguez's office um, it, it seemed like pretty much every weekend we were out doing a community service project whether it was abating graffiti or um, uh, building uh, painting over a fence or, or building or planting trees out in the community and I know m that my staff can attest and I know that they're in the back and I want to thank them uh, for the hard work that, did, that, that uh, they do. Andrea, Derek, Patty, Norma, uh, Robert, Frank, uh, they do a tremendous job being my extension out in the community. But uh, we've, we've launched an initiative called Great Neighborhoods Now, um, where we go out into the community, we work with, uh, whether it's a faith-based uh, service group, organization, uh, it's a church, it's a school, uh, and we target areas that need attention or need a little bit more extra care, whether it's uh, abating graffiti, whether it's uh, helping fix someone's uh, privacy fence, whether it's working with a nonprofit group. How many folks, I, and I know I'm gonna see a lot of hands, but how many folks volunteer for a non, with a nonprofit group? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, it's so important um, because those nonprofits are the, are the hands in our community that help and uh, it, that's what it's all about. It's about giving back and, and making a, a better community than what you found it. So that's why we're really focused and we're really, um, we're really mindful that we want to make this community, our, our community District 7 and throughout the city, certainly a better one than what we found it. So I want to thank my staff for um, being out there day in and day out, on the weekends, out in the community, doing all kinds of projects. And, and we've got a lot more projects to come. Um, and that's something that certainly makes me excited. 
as well. Um, you know, 2014 has been pretty pretty busy. Uh, you know, Gabe mentioned that uh, uh, in addition to uh, my, my service on the council, I serve in the United States Air Force Reserve, and I have the uh, tremendous honor of pinning on captain in June next month. Um, so 2014 has been great. I finally, finally uh, wrapped up my master's degree at St. Mary's in public administration. So 2014 is off to a great start. But in addition to that, uh, it's finally, thanks, thank you. It took me a long, it took me a long enough time, but uh, finally, we were finally able to get it done. Um, but 2014 is really kind of the, that pinnacle year of seeing a lot of the bond program, bond pro uh, program projects that were passed by the voters in 2012 that we're starting to, starting to finally see them uh, turn dirt. Uh, we've got a lot of bond program projects that are underway uh, on Bandera Road, much needed, a lot of uh, traffic calming projects along Bandera and Peru and Bandera and Eckert. Um, we're in the midst of the uh, $24 million drainage project at Woodlawn Lake, and one that you know, uh, Joe Alderete has been a tremendous advocate for for many, many years down at Woodlawn Lake. But uh, you know, that, that is, I have to say, Joe, that I think this project here is the largest one that we've ever done. So I, I, I think I got you on that one. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're in the midst of that. And I think uh, we're, we're projected at finally finishing that project at the end of the year. And that's going to lift, that project is significant because it's going to lift about 250 homes out of the floodplain uh, in and around Woodlawn Lake. So uh, we're very excited about that. Um, and making sure that that project is, it is for one, it's on time and it's uh, under budget and we're going to continue to maintain that. So I want to thank city staff. I know I see some city staff folks that are here. I want to thank them for their tremendously, uh, the tremendous job that they do, their hard work. Um, let's, let's give city staff a big round of applause. <clears throat> and I know that we could not do it, you know, I, I really, um, our staff is only as good as their leader, and I know our city manager, Cheryl Scully, does a tremendous job. And I also want, you, I want to ask to keep her uh, in your prayers. Her father passed away over the weekend, so uh, I know that um, our thoughts and our prayers are with her through that time. But I want to thank Cheryl for her, her work, her, her tremendous hard work that she does on behalf of the city. Um, kind of looking ahead, um, you know, we've, uh, we, we've, we've had the opportunity to really work with a great mayor and a great council. Uh, mayor Castro has uh, uh, really taken the city, I think, in a positive direction. I was, I was talking to uh, a young man yesterday at Frost Bank, and, and uh, I, was, I was actually in my gym clothes. I, I had my hair combed, and I was presentable somewhat. But we were just talking, and he had, we were kind of just chatting, and I asked him how long he was at Frost Bank. Is Frost here, or do we have other banks here? No, I'm kidding. But uh, we were just chatting, and I, you know, he was a young guy. And, uh, and I just asked, you know, asked him, you from San Antonio? Yeah, I'm from San Antonio, born and raised. And you know, he's kind of, you know, kind of proud talking about San Antonio. He said, you know, I'm really excited about San Antonio. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of an exciting time to be here. Um, you, know, you really see the city kind of on the move and the you know, city on the rise. And, and we're talking. And, and I said, yeah, you know, it, really is, it, it really is a special time to be in San Antonio. He said, uh, you know, it, it's probably, uh, I, would, I would imagine it's exciting to be you know, maybe down at City Hall, and, and it, it, he didn't know who I was, and I, I didn't really know who he was, um, and then we just started talking, he asked me what I did, so I, I serve on the San Antonio City Council, and he just looked at me, and I looked at him, and, and uh, but it, it was nice to see that kind of, just that kind of genuine conversation about our city and how, what our young folks think. Um, it turns out he was actually, his name is Chris Mary, M-E-R-Y, he's Judge Michael Mary's son, so he, he knows a little bit, but uh, it was interesting um, talking to him about that, and I told him to say hello to the family and, and to the Mary family, but uh, it, was, it was good to know that we have um, young folks that believe in our city and I think are going to be the future leaders of the city, and um, it, it was just a great discussion to have, and, and I told him, I know I, I don't look like a San Antonio City Councilman, I was wearing a, an old uh, gym shirt, but... Uh, it was just exciting to hear that, uh, you know, I think we are, we definitely are moving in the right direction. It's because of groups like the West Chamber that uh, keep San Antonio, I think, a vibrant one, and certainly one on the west side where uh, if it's good for the west side, it's good for San Antonio. And, and uh, that's why it's just, it's just um, really a privilege and an honor to uh, serve the near, I've heard it called the west side of San Antonio, my district, 
the near west side of San Antonio, the near north side of San Antonio. I don't care what you call it, it's a great place to be in San Antonio. So uh, with that, I just want to again thank everybody for coming out this morning. Um, it really, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to my staff that uh, y'all are here um, and y'all uh, get to listen to about all the great things that we're doing in District 7 and, and not just in District 7, but as, as a city as a whole. And we've got a lot more exciting things to come. We're going to be opening up another first in District 7 later this year. It's going to be the brand new District 7 Senior Center. Um, you know, and, and I share that for me, I, I, I didn't, my, both my grandparents, both my grandfathers passed away before I was born. But my wife, Jackie, she, she had a, a tremendous, beautiful relationship with her grandfather. He served in World War II. Um, he drove a tank through North Africa and into Italy and to Germany. And he was just a, a true inspiration to me um, when I, I married my wife. And, and uh, I got to know him and got to know his story. And he was really, uh, after 9-11, he was the second reason why I wanted to join the military and serve and give back because he was such a humble man. Um, and one that, um, you know, he, he didn't say an awful lot, but when you did, but when he did, you listened. And um, what he said really had a lot of value. And, um, you know, so seniors, this, the, the well-being of our seniors in my community is very important to me. So I'm very, very excited and honored that we're going to be opening up a, a first class um, District 7 Senior Center later this year. And uh, I know that uh, Councilman Lopez, he, he does a tremendous job of taking care of his, his, uh, his seniors in District 6. And, and certainly that's a model that uh, we want to emulate in District 7. Not just emulate, though, but uh, go a little bit uh, a notch higher, too, right? <laughs> but uh, with that, again, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, I look forward to continuing to serve on the City Council. It's been a tremendous privilege and an honor. Um, and anything that we can do um, for... The folks that are here for the West Chamber, my door is always open. My, uh, uh, I always have an open ear, um, and I always want to make sure that y'all know that I'm, I'm accessible to you uh, and to your business. And, and, I, and I, I think it's also fitting that I'm here on uh, National Small Business Week. That's very important. So uh, with that, thank you all again so much. I promise to get you all back on time. And uh, again, thank you all um, for being here this morning. Thank you for supporting the West Chamber. Thank you for... Uh, your service in our community, and uh, y'all have a great, tremendous uh, day, and uh, go Spurs go. God bless y'all. Thank you.